Before you start listening to this new podcast episode, I want to let you guys know that we accidentally didn't click record on our Rodecaster Pro, which records the clear audio that you guys are used to hearing. So for the first roughly 45 minutes of the podcast, it is audio from the video. So the audio isn't as good as the original audio that you guys are used to. We apologize for that. We realized it a little late into the episode and we didn't want to re-record it because we wanted our genuine reaction to the Kendrick Lamar song that recently dropped. So sorry for the inconvenience and enjoy. What up guys, your boy Quake. We're back with a brand new episode of the Diverse Mentality Podcast number 139. 139. And you already know, everybody knows what's going Vito. I'm trying to turn off that little below thing because make a little oh, noise. Be hot as here. No, it ain't. It'll be all right. Um, so, PlayStation 5 giveaway. Yes. We got to start out always with that because it is coming to an end. Next Sunday is the final date that you can enter, the final day that you can enter for the PlayStation 5 giveaway, May 15th. So, enter before it's over. Tell a friend to tell a friend. And... Yes. That's it. One more week officially as of the recording of this episode. By the time you guys hear this, it'll be six days left. So, Mm -hmm. diversementality.com forward slash giveaway. And then we'll do the giveaway live May 22nd because I got to get all the names in. I got to get the Patreon people's names in multiple times that are supported. So it's going to take a little while to get that. At least a week I'm going to need to um, gather all that, get the papers and all that at the big bowl and then do the uh, live event on the main YouTube channel. That Saturday or Sunday, I think I'm on one of those days. So, diversementality.com forward slash giveaway. And then patreon.com forward slash diversementality. Support us. Thank you to everybody to support us. We also got a new Stun Island supporter. So, Thank you, guys. Um, I got a shout out to Stun Island supporter. We got a new shout one. Shout out to everybody. I'm not going to say the person's full name because I know. Um, let's just say the first name is Ronisha. So shout out to that person. Stun Island member, we appreciate the support. And um, yeah, let's get into it. Now, we were lucky to not record this episode <laughs> earlier because um, something happened and then we'll, something crazy happened. So crazy. One of the biggest artists ever, ever dropped a song. So first, before we get into that, we got to send our condolences <clears throat> to two people. I know one, one person here didn't really uh, do much in hip hop, but... He's been on a lot of hip hop podcasts and, you know, mixed and mingled with artists and stuff like that. And that is Kevin Samuels. If you don't know who Kevin Samuels is, uh, he passed away actually uh, following, I think, what was it? Friday. May 6th. May 6th. Right. Uh, anyways, he, yeah, he passed away, I think, May 6th. Why is that date not showing up? Just oh, it died him. Thursday, May 5th. May 5th. Yeah. Yeah, May 5th. He died at the age of 57. If you guys don't know who he is, a lot of controversy. There's people making fun of his death when he died on Twitter. Wow. Uh, because here's the thing. People get their feelings hurt by which, how things are said sometimes. Words and people, the way that they say them, should not want you to be excited when somebody dies just because of things they said. Mm-hmm. That makes no sense at all. Right. Now, if this person has murdered people, if this person has harmed a lot of people, if this person uh, you know, did those type of things, then yeah, you should be excited the person died. It's a bad person. You know, I think we all agree Hitler. We don't you know right. we don't like Hitler. Nobody likes Hitler. You know, that's that's one person that I think Evil. as a whole general the whole world can agree that they don't like him. So, you know, when he passed away, a lot of people that um that didn't like the way he was saying things, he's basically an image consultant. And he's like a relationship um, type of advice giver, stuff like that. So he would be brutally honest with people when they came onto his platform and said, hey, why am I still single? I want this. I want that in a relationship. And he would simply be, especially to women, because a lot of women don't hear this. Mm -hmm. At least the statistics show that. And if you say this on social media, you usually get backlash for it. But he would basically talk to men and women. And tell them the truth. You know, there'll be guys that'll be like, hey, I want this beautiful girl. I want her to be this. I want her to be that. But then they'll, they don't have nothing going for themselves. And he would call them out for that. Same with women. Exact same thing. They want this guy that with this dreamy tall guy who has six figures, makes all his money, but they have nothing going for themselves. So he would just basically 
tell people the brutal truth and a lot of people would come out and say, hey, this guy's changed my life, man. Um, but then there was a lot of people criticizing him, saying these guys, this guy was rude, mean, this and that, all because of what he said. Um, yeah, to wish, you know, to be excited about someone's death because of what they said, that's a mental, that has to be a mental illness, I think. Yeah. That definitely is a mental illness. I've never, I don't know, I could care, like Rick Ross, for example, if he died, I would be actually sad. I wouldn't like, oh my God, yeah, congratulations, like, I wouldn't get, I'm, that's right, not, right. I don't know the guy like that. I'm just, you know, yeah, a correctional officer here and there, just joke around, stuff like that. But I would never wish death on Rick Ross. Uh, one guy even released on Twitter his list of people he wishes downfall. Like, who has a list of people that they wish downfall on? He's got like 37 people. He's got T.I. on there. He's got this Kevin Samuels guy. He's got like quite a few people on there. Just weird, man. That's a mental illness. Those type of people who get excited about somebody dying make absolutely no sense to me. Um, yeah, so recipes to him. He died at 57. He was, um, the Atlanta police revealed that uh, the person that was with him was a female. She was like uh, a little bit of a nurse, too. Uh, he was complaining of chest pains mm -hmm. and then ultimately fell on that girl because he passed out, fell on her, and then she called the police. And then by the time it came, he already passed away. So I'm sure he get, we're going to reveal down the line to be like a heart attack or something like that. So. Um, yeah, rest in peace. Now, more on the hip hop side, unfortunately. Uh, Death Row Records first lady, Lady Jewel, or Jewel, I don't know how to pronounce, I'm probably butchering the name, uh, has passed away. She passed away at 5 a.m. on Friday, May 6th, roughly two months after she revealed she'd been hospitalized with eight pounds of fluid in her heart, lungs, and legs. Mr. Cause of Death, however, hasn't been confirmed. So, Joel was signed to Death Row from 1992 to 1996 and had multiple hits with artists such as Dr. Dre, The Dog Pound, NWA, and Bone Thugs and Harmony. Um, she sang a lot of hooks. Uh, she also did work on the Deep Cover soundtrack as well as Let Me Ride and Bitches Ain't Shit from Dr. Dre's uh, Chronic album. Um, gin and Juice, she had a part in that. It's been on Gin and Juice, she would sing. So a lot of the singing parts of uh, you know, on death row, she would basically say she would be seen but not really heard musically a lot. But she would do parts. It's like Nate Dogg, a lot of hooks. But Nate Dogg had albums that came out, so a little different. But yeah, she's been around for. A while. Yeah, so rest in peace to her. Rest in peace. Uh, I don't know what age. It does not say the age. Let me see. The other one shows the age, but doesn't show the date. This one shows the date, but doesn't show the age. But the damn these bloggers, man, I don't know what they're doing sometimes. Fifty-four, so roughly around the same age as that guy, fifty-seven. Yeah, fifties, bro. That's pretty it's young. young still. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty young now. Fifty still young. Definitely young. Um, you got a lot more life to live. So, recipes to her too. So, um, now let's get into the <laughs> Kendrick Lamar. Yeah, brother. Kendrick Lamar. So, like I said, we were supposed to record this podcast a little bit earlier. Thankfully, we didn't. We are a little bit later tonight recording it. And thankfully, we did because Kendrick Lamar has dropped the first... We don't even know if it's the first single of the album because the Heart series he's done... This is part five of the Heart series. So, we don't know if it's going to be on the album or not. I'm sure it is. Um, but he dropped the Heart part five. We'll get into the bars and all that stuff right now, but first, I want to give my quick thoughts, just kind of like shoot them out there. And if you, by the way, if you haven't heard the song, because I know some of you like to listen to the podcast early in the morning, immediately when it drops, sometimes you guys like to listen to it. If you haven't seen the video and heard the song, please go check it out before you listen to the podcast, because, you know, I want you kind of to get the gist of what I'm talking about here. And I don't want to ruin it for you or spoil you anything. So <clears throat> fair warning right now. Pause it. Go watch it if you haven't. Go listen to it if you haven't. And then, you know, come back and uh, get our thoughts on it. So the Heart Part 5, the Heart series is very great. There's a Part 5 to it. The video, I watched it with the video. I didn't hear the song. Like, I didn't listen to the song. Then I watched the video. I just watched it with the video. By the way, it's like frozen the views on there because a lot of people are watching it probably. So yeah. we'll see the numbers and the views on it. Then the video is like a dark, uh, 
dark red background. I don't know what the, the, the right color term for it. I know it's a like a beige. I don't know what you want to call Valid. it. Valid. I don't know yet. But it's a dark red. It first starts out saying, I am all of us. With Oklahoma, which is the new kind of uh, thing called Kendrick is, Kendrick is calling himself. Uh, and then it's like a dark red background. Kendrick's got his hair grown out, white t-shirt, black bandana, beard, light beard, and starts out like this. As I get a little older, I realize life is perspective. And my perspective, perspective may differ from yours. I want to say thank you to everyone that's been down with me, all my fans, all my beautiful fans, anyone who's ever gave me a listen, all my people. Then the video, he's rapping doing his thing. I'm going to go over the bars in a little bit. Then what happens is uh, deep fake. If you don't know what deep fake is, it's like a face swapping thing that makes it look like it's real. Uh, this technology is starting to become more and more accessible to regular people. It's actually kind of scary because it can look really, really real if, you know, you do certain things. Like there's a guy who does deep fakes on TikTok. <clears throat> he pretends he's Tom Cruise. Damn. And he looks so much, sounds like him, looks so much like him that for years people thought it was actually Tom Cruise until Tom Cruise finally came out and said, hey, that's not me, man. You guys are, this has nothing yeah, to do with me. So this, yeah, the, the, the deep fake shit is scary. And the, the, the accessibility to it is becoming more and more and more. And down the line, they even do it, like they've been using deep fakes to, to corrupt politics. Like they use a oh, deep fake of Ukrainian, shit. the Ukrainian. Yeah, I'm sure they do. Yeah. yeah, the Ukrainian president, they got a deep fake of him saying, Something like it was crazy, something yeah, like yeah. you know, and people some people believe it. This is the problem. A lot of older right. people don't know about this stuff. A lot of people in general don't know about That's these things. So crazy. So it's it's a it's a scary thing to get into. But in this video, he Kendrick Lamar uses deep fake. And immediately the first person that's on the deep fake is OJ Simpson. Which surprised the shit out of me. I was watching the video and just boom, pops up OJ Simpson. I was like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. Then it goes to Kanye West. Then it goes to Jesse, uh, Jesse Smollett, which is a guy who faked uh, getting attacked by uh, racist people. Mm -hmm. uh, that whole controversy of that. Then it goes to, I believe, Will Smith. Then Kobe Bryant. Yeah. And, and then towards the end, Nipsey Hussle. I could be wrong in that order, but those are the people that he deep fakes. Right. Nipsey actually does twice. Does he do Will Smith twice too? I don't think he does most of them. I don't know. Probably. Or maybe he kept it longer. Yeah, Nipsey also he did twice. He got into yeah. it, got back to his normal, and got back into it. For sure. Um, because he has more of a connection. Out of all these people, from what I've seen in the public, I don't know Kendrick Lamar personally. Publicly, he's had more of a connection with Nipsey Hussle. And honestly, honestly, I've been waiting for him to say something about Nipsey since he passed. And I was just waiting. But I knew Kendrick was going to speak about it in the music. So, yeah. Um, Okay. It is using a Marvin Gaye sample. The sample is, I believe the song is called I Want You by Marvin Gaye. And he references some uh, H to the Izzo, B to the Izzo, Jay-Z bars. And then, yeah. My first thoughts, Kendrick is going in clearly. I mean, this guy is in a whole different stratosphere. What he's talking about is just bone chilling at the end. I actually started getting my eyes started getting water because what he's talking about with Nipsey's face kind of looked real. But yeah. Like that was Nipsey doing the movie he's doing with his hands in the video. Right. Kind of looked like Nipsey. One. So maybe, I was like, I was getting tricked a little bit. I was like, whoa. Like yes. the way you, you speak in the bars is crazy. So towards the end, I was like, damn, that's crazy. And then, yeah, just the execution, everything, production. It's not, you know, trap, trap, trap all the time. Some refreshing new. And you can tell Kendrick is going to deliver something insane with these two albums, maybe. Because they're supposed to be damn two albums. When Damn came out, they're supposed to be a blue version. Damn, that never came out. Yeah. Album. So, yeah, that's my thoughts on it. It was just, um, obviously, I'm going to break down the bars. But, yeah, like I was telling you, it felt like that uh, when he was doing the Nipsey Hustle. It felt like Nipsey wanted him to say that. Yeah. It's like, you know, he got it from him. Or, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a good way of... Um, and it was weird just seeing Nipsey. Yeah, it yeah. felt like I, I was seeing like a music video of like yeah. him or something came new. I'm like, Dang, which I'm sure they're crazy. gonna do down the line. They're gonna do like a, uh, you know, somebody that looks yeah. like him and probably that you can do that now. So, which is kind of scary and weird, yeah. honestly. And Nipsey hit me more. Like it was giving me more of an effect. 
Yeah, I mean, I had because I guess because I liked him a lot more. Yeah, music wise, I guess. Yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah. We, we were huge fans of Nipsey also, mm. and Aramis as with as with Om Shot to him too. Yeah. Uh, same person, but yeah. Aramis is the yeah. one that you guys should not forget. The name Aramis Asgadon, that's the real person behind Nipsey Hussle. Because Nipsey Hussle is a character, remember that. A lot of these rappers, characters, you know, not saying that they're fake, by the way. I don't want to get that misconstrued. I'm just saying that there's different personalities. There's a real person, and then there's, you know, uh, the image that they have out there. Mm -hmm. So let's go over the bars. Uh, verse one starts out some, uh, saying, I come from a generation of pain where murder is minor, rebellious, and Margellus will chip you for designer. Basically, you know, um, the price of life is cheap in a lot of these ghettos, a lot of these hoods, uh, where, you know, people can get killed just for Jordans. That's, you know, there's been reports of that last time. So he just starts out by saying, listen, man, uh, I've been here. I've been through the worst, the slums. Um, and then he keeps going in that type of direction. I'm not going to go over every single bar, but let's go down. Yeah, you understand it, how it works, man. Yeah. Uh, he says, I want the one want the one back. And then verse two is where the uh, face swap starts. So within the first verse, you know, very, very hard hitting because when, you, when you're watching the video and you're listening to the lyrics, it's hard to keep up with both. So I have to kind of stop, you know, process the lyrics, watch the video and stuff like that. Verse two, he's, this is where he switches to OJ Simpson. The bar says, starts out, I said I do this for my culture to let y'all know what an n-word look like in a bulletproof rover he is referencing the jay-z h the Izzo bars where he says i do this for my culture to let him know what an n-word look like when an n guy's in a roaster now um if you remember let's see uh while jay was rapping about a specific vehicle the range brothers let me see. Where's the... Working late. Hold on, I was looking. I was trying to find the lines. This could be referencing to also the OJ Simpson. You know, he was in that... Uh, it wasn't a Range Rover or anything like that, but it was in that vehicle, that getaway vehicle. Was that What was that vehicle? It was like that a, was in the street? Yeah, that vehicle. was like a buck. Uh, oh, the Bronco? Bronco, yes. Yeah. The Bronco. Bucks. I was, I was, I was trying to get yeah. it out there. Yeah, that Bronco. So, um, to let y'all know what a guy looked like in a bulletproof rover, he's referencing a rover, but why when he switches, he says, you know, it reminds us of the Bronco incident where um, O.J. Simpson's running out when the, when the highway with that, with the bars. Um, obviously, he's referencing Jay-Z mostly here, but it was interesting to see his face switch mm -hmm. at that moment. And then it switches to Kanye West. He says, friends bipolar, grab you by your pockets, no option if you froze up, always play the offense. If you guys know, Kanye West was diagnosed with bi uh, bipolar disorder back in 2016. So right when he says, friends, bipolar, grab you by your pockets. Kanye has openly said, well, not really openly, he's been here and there with it, but you can tell he's, he's facing this. But Pusha T, who knows Kanye, is close to Kanye. Dame Dash, who's been around Kanye quite a few times. They both revealed that a lot of his close friends, you know, I'm using the, the kind of quotes of friends, not really your friends, but they're, they're considered friends, have tried to use him for his money. Mm -hmm. And dealing with that when you're bipolar is even worse because you're in mood swings and then you're thinking, am I the crazy one here with people asking me for money and stuff? Am I the one that's wrong? Because when you're bipolar, you're going back and forth on a right. lot of things. So that's even worse, it just makes things 10 times worse. So with Kendrick saying, friends bipolar, grab you by your pockets, I think he's referencing that when it comes to what Kanye West has been going through in his life. Uh, and then, because when Kanye and Kendrick collaborated in the No, no Parties in L.A., uh, Kanye addressed how one of his cousins threatened to leak Kanye West's sex tape from an allegedly stolen laptop, uh, which heightened his trust issues. In the bars, he said, and as far as real friends to all my cousins, I love them. Even, one, even the one that stole my laptop, you dirty motherfucker. We're just trying to extort somebody for money. Um, that's a cousin. So like, I'm sure Kanye is going through a lot of shit with personal people trying to take your money. When you're a billionaire, you go through that. Uh, no option. If you froze up, always play the offense. 
Kanye usually likes to play the offense on a lot of things. Kanye will respond before anything really gets out of control or he'll react first to something so he can get ahead of it. Uh, Kanye's always been known to do that. So, you know, it's pretty dope, you know, that, that Kendrick is like has their, their face and then he's like referencing moments of them. Right. Which I've never seen been done. Yeah. Before, so. Never. Uh, continuing on. This is where he talks about um, Nipsey Hussle, but I don't think the face doesn't go to Nipsey Hussle. It goes to, to the end. But this is where he talks about Nipsey Hussle for the first time. He says, the streets got me fucked up. Y'all can miss me. I want to represent for us. New, sorry, I'm not like uh, broken. Yes. So yeah, the streets got me fucked up. Y'all can miss me. I want to represent for us. New revolution was up and moving. I'm in Argentina wiping my tears Full of confusion, water in between us, another peer has been executed. History repeats again. Make amends, then find an N-word with the same skin to do it. So, this is a lot to unpack here. Um, so, the streets got me fucked up, y'all can miss me, I want to represent for us. Street code, you know, a lot of crazy things happen. I'm sure Kendrick Lamar is referring to the streets and what they stand for sometimes, he doesn't agree with it. New revolution was up and moving. Now, what is what I what I connected this to was when Kendrick hopped on the Nipsey Hustle album Victory Lap. Yeah. On dedication. Yep. When he's saying these bars, new revolution was up and moving, meaning where we were creating a whole new wave, a new revolution for people. Again, like Tupac and Biggie were starting to do, but then they passed away. In the dedication bars on uh, Nipsey Hustle's album. Kendrick at the end says, I'm at the premiere politicking with Top Nip and Snoop. Damn Pac watching the way we grew from dedication. So they were they were always getting together, politicking, trying to create new laws. Nipsey was supposed to talk with the LAPD actually the following day after he died. Yeah. To try to, and Snoop was as well, to try to, you know, help the community as much as he could. Mm -hmm. So in this new song, you know, he was like, New Revolution was up and coming. You know, we're starting to get things going. And then I hear in Argentina, Lollapalooza, Kendrick Lamar was uh, doing a show in Lollapalooza in Argentina. This was on March 31st, 2019, which is the exact day Nipsey Hussle got killed. So imagine you hear one of your close friends dies and then you got to go perform. How is that? I That's pretty tough to do, man. Yeah, that is. <laughs> and to have energy to pretend like nothing happened. So he starts out the show. And he's like, you know, I hope you guys, you know, having a great night. But then uh, we just got wind that, you know, one of my homies, Nipsey, died. Damn. So clearly uh, in these bars he's saying I was in Argentina wiping my tears full of confusion, water in between us. Meaning there's distance. Argentina is far. It's mm -hmm. like water in between us. Uh, another peer has been executed. History repeats again. Meaning Tupac, Biggie, people passing away. Then he says to make amends for a quick moment. Then find... Uh, N word with the same skin to do it. So then it just repeats again. But that's culture. He says, crack a bottle. Hard to deal with pain when you're sober. As you know, substance abuse, try to get away from problems. He talks about the swimming pool. He's talking about this constantly. Uh, by tomorrow, we forget the remains. We start over. Meaning these ashes, they turn into ashes. We forget. We move on. And then it happens again. It just keeps happening again. That's the problem, he says. Our, our foundation was trained to accept whatever follows, uh, dehumanize and sensitive, scrutinize the way we live for you and I. Enemy shook my hand. I can promise I'll meet you in a land where no equal is your equal. Never say I ain't told you. Nah. In a land where hurt people hurt more people. Fuck calling it culture. Now, when he said these bars in a land where hurt people hurt more people, Will Smith's face popped up. Now, what do we say when Will Smith um, slapped Chris Rock? What do we say at the time? We said he didn't slap Chris Rock because it's a joke. He slapped it because of how much problems he's going through. Yeah. Now, with not only his wife, but the public making fun of his relationship, all the stuff, the August Alcina thing. So when, when, when Kendrick's rapping these bars and Will Smith's face comes up, He's saying in a land where hurt people hurt more people. Will Smith was hurt. Mm -hmm. Ended up hurting Chris Rock because he's hurt himself. Yeah. 
So he says, fuck calling a culture. So he is referencing that. That's kind of crazy that he references that because yeah, yeah, so this guy hasn't been, yeah, this guy hasn't been active for a while. To do that was really dope. It's crazy how yeah, Will Smith here, like this is like a mo this is a very recent thing. What? Will Smith situation. Yeah. I'm sure he added it in probably. Yeah, or maybe he must maybe. have added it in or he just probably did this recently. This, yeah. This whole thing. So Yeah, there's a lot to unpack here, man. If I went over every single bar, there's yeah. too many bars right now to unpack. It would be insane to break this song down bar for bar. So let me let me go a little bit further. I want to go to the Nipsey Hussle part, but then I want to talk a little bit more about the Kobe part too. Yep. Let's see. Verse three now? Yeah, I'm on verse three. I'm trying to go over the celebrate new life when I come back around. The purpose is in the lessons we learn in now. Sacrifice personal gain over everything just to see the next generation better than ours. I think that was what Kobe's face was. Because Kobe believes a lot in believing yourself, mama mentality, always have and drive. Uh, doing better so the next generation can do better. So I think that's when his face changed. Could have been somewhere else, but yeah, that sounds about right. That sounds yeah, Kobe like so. Because I, I think it was Kobe and then Nipsey. Yeah. 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 Because it makes sense. Yes. Yeah. Yep. They're both from LA. Well, not well. Kobe's not from LA, but they're both held down in LA. So. Right. Uh, let's see. Now. This is where his face changes to Nipsey, and then he 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 basically talks as if he was Nipsey. So this is the part that really got to me. I was like, whoa, that's great. He says, I woke up that morning with more heart to give you as I bleed through the speakers, feel my presence. To my brother, to my kids, I'm in heaven. To my mother, my, to my sis, I'm in heaven. To my father, to my wife, I'm serious, this is heaven. To my friends, make sure you count the blessings. To my fans, Make sure you make them investments. Nipsey was very heavy on educating people on investments. Uh, we always, I've always seen, yeah. Uh, and to the killer that sped up my demise, this is Eric Holder, we just talked about the last episode. Uh, I forgive you. Just know your souls in question. That's very deep. Uh, I seen the pain in your pupil when that trigger had squeezed. And though you did me gruesome, I was surely relieved. I completed my mission, wasn't ready to leave, but fulfilled my days. My creator was pleased. What did Nipsey Hussle's mom say? When she saw Nipsey Hussle dead and essentially passed away, he looked like he was at peace. Yeah. He looked like he had accomplished what he needed to accomplish on this earth. And that when he passed away, he is, you can tell that his mom said it felt like his soul was like, hey, I did what I had to do. You know, this was my journey, and right. it was done. So, to him to reference that is very, very dope. And the, the way he references to make it rhyme, the delivery, the face on the video, just perfect execution. Like this is why Kendrick, I think, to me, now we had the debate of, yeah. it's like it's you know you don't get this type of shit from much and, and artists. artists <laughs> yeah, that, that, right yeah. So, let me repeat those bars because they're that, that good. And to the killer that sped up my demise, I forgive you. Just know your soul's in question. I see, I seen the pain in your pupil when that trigger had squeezed. And though you did me gruesome, I was surely relieved. I completed my mission, wasn't ready to leave. But fulfilled my days, my creator was pleased. He continued, said, I can't stress how I love y'all. I don't need to be in flesh just to hug y'all. The memories recollect just because y'all celebrate me with respect. The unity we protect is above all. And now he's referencing his brother. He talks to his brother, Sam, Black Sam. He said, and Sam, I'll be watching over you. Make sure my kids watch all my interviews. Make sure you live all the dreams we produce. Keep that genius in your brain on the move. And to my neighborhood, let the good prevail. Make sure them babies and the leaders out of jail. Look for salvation when troubles get real because you can't help the world until you help yourself. And I can't blame the hood the day that I was killed. Y'all had to see it. That's the only way to feel. And though my physical won't reap the benefits, the energy that carry on Emmett's still, I want you. So he's saying, yeah. It really felt like it was Nipsey. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, no, no. 
he executed it really, yeah, really well, man. Um, this is the first project. Yeah. <laughs> like, you just gave us, like, the first shit is already on fire. Yeah, so, um, yeah, uh, let me see. Wow, he's going to win some crazy <laughs> award for this shit. But yeah, no, no, the video is, like, is just, I can't see it not happening. Yeah, so I wonder. I, I wonder what the reaction of of or his family. I don't know if they heard. Yeah, it. they're probably shit. I can't wait till he just gets a dozen interviews. Who? What the fuck? Kendrick. Yeah, he speaks about this. Now this is a hell of a way, man, to to speak on something like this. This is a different way of doing. It. This is something. Like I was reading them, my eyes started getting watery. That's how crazy it is. Like he he nailed it, man. Yeah, he did. Um, Good job. Yeah. Part, part five. I. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I'll, I'm I'm still speechless because when I watched it, I was just like, "What the hell is going on?" And uh, yeah, just execution, man. There's no, there's not many rappers can do this. Not many artists, period. Not even rappers, categorized in one section. Artists, period, can do this. Yeah, he knows what to do. Yeah. Um, that's just the first song, man. So I don't even know. Yeah. I don't know what to expect. You got Mr. Morrell and the Big Steppers, and it's literally dropping in what, five days, four days? Yeah, I think so. So, yeah, May, May, what is it, May 15th or something like that? Or no, not May 15th, May 13th. Yeah, May 15th is a giveaway. Yeah. <laughs> I always forget, like, all these days are close. May 13th, so. Yeah. Make sure all my kids watch my interviews, uh, my neighbor, yeah, this. Uh, yeah. The marathon continues. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely. I hope that guy gets locked up and you know gets his time because that's what I'm looking at. So, yeah, Kendrick, you you left me completely speechless. I am flabbergasted. I don't know what word to use. Yeah, man. <laughs> I really don't know. I sometimes when you can't explain something. You just this can't. is what I call perfection. Exactly. Uh, so shout out to Kendrick Lamar, the Heart Five Five. Go ahead and check it out, and we'll keep our eye out on the next stuff that happens. Lil Wayne. So Lil Wayne appeared on Nick Wright's uh, new show, What's Right? And he was asked to name his top five rappers. I already knew his first one is because he always says this. Missy Elliott. Which Missy Elliott always thinks. I was like, wow. Uh, this is what Missy Elliott react. This is what Missy Elliott said about Lil Wayne saying that. Whenever Lil Wayne says my name in his interviews, Twitter don't have enough space for me to say my gratefulness because he is a legend himself who birthed many MCs after him. And as a man to acknowledge me being as a big influence for him, I send you love, Wayne. Another reason this warms my heart is because I've seen many times Lil Wayne has said my name over and over for years, no matter who the interviewers are. He has never been hesitant to say me as a female. And for that, I am forever grateful. Missy Elliott is very underrated, so shout out to Lil Wayne for keeping yeah. her name out there and still showing how much respect. That's his favorite rapper. That's it. That's coming from Lil Wayne, a guy who was yeah, inter shit. who's influenced basically the whole new generation, you could argue. So, mm -hmm. um, then he says, uh, Jay-Z is the best to ever speak. Okay. So it makes sense because he's a lot older. So his his top five would be different from Mike. You know? do, you, do you agree with that? I think so. No, Jay-Z's yeah. Jay yeah. got, Jay got bars, man. Don't get me wrong. Jay-Z can rap his ass yeah, off. Um, I just never gravitated to music like that, but it doesn't mean, doesn't mean he's not a good rapper. Uh, then he says Biggie. Then he's like, I have the whole Goody Mob, and then I have UGK. So that's groups, two groups. Okay. So that's interesting. I didn't, I didn't hear. I knew he liked Jay Z and Miss Elliot. I knew those two. I never really heard Biggie that he really, you know, I even heard him say Eminem at a certain point. So I'm surprised he didn't mention Eminem there. He did at one point. Yeah. So um, but you know, everybody's top five changes. Mine. Forever is going to be 50 number one. But then after that, the, the numbers sometimes switch. You know, for sure. So I think that's that's probably the same with him. Missy Elliott, he's always given his number one his favorite. And then the rest, maybe Jay-Z gives again. But the rest, sometimes, I'm sure it's going to change for him in the next five years. But then Nick asks him in the interview, he's like, he's like, uh, why aren't you in the top five? He's like, oh, I not me. I can't compete with these guys. I'm not even close to these people. That's usually anybody who's a fan of hip-hop. You know, Eminem even never gives himself props. It's like, I'm the greatest. He always says, listen, these other people wash me. They're way better. So that's a great way to respond to it. So. Yeah, and they're fans of it. Yeah. Shout out to Weezy, baby. 42, Doug. 
42 was head. This in this photo, 42 Doug looks like a little kid. He sure does. Yeah, he looks like he's 13. Yeah, I swear. What the hell? <laughs> yeah, he's this is crazy. Yeah, he's very short. Just like he has he a kid. He just looks him. young. Yeah, that too. Yeah. Uh, he was arrested by the federal agents after landing at Detroit Airport. 42 Doug was reportedly arrested in the hometown of Detroit on Thursday, May 5th, as he returned from Memphis, Tennessee. According to the Detroit News, the Motor City rapper was taken to custody by federal agents for failing to surrender and serve a six-month prison sentence. The latest arrest follows a string of legal troubles for 42 Doug. In March 2020, he was arrested on federal gun charges for possessing a gun as a felon. He was apprehended again in August 2020 for evading police just two months prior. Last May, 42 Doug and his legal team entered plea negotiations with a gun charge, which carried a maximum sentence of 10 years. But with the plea deal, he was able to avoid jail time and get away with probation. However, a judge revoked his probation soon after and slapped him with six months in jail and two years of supervised release. Man, just more problems, man. I, I tell, I, I've repeated this on this podcast 90 million times. If you cause a problem, just face it like a man. I know it sucks, but you did that. Learn your lesson. And jail and prison ain't that bad. I think they just hate, like, having Stop to, it. yeah, to, like. Hey, if you really look at it, and I mainly, I heard this from Charles the White. Cause I've been watching him a lot recently. I actually want him on the podcast. You don't know who Charles White is, go ahead and check him out. He was like, every time rappers get locked up, at least for the most part, they start reading books, they start working out, they start, you know, like paying attention to the shit that's important in life. Mm. And not clubbing, money, strippers, all this dumb stuff. He's like, they actually do, like, look at Gucci. Gucci's the, one of the perfect examples. Yeah. That when he got locked up, he changed his life for the better. He's way better as a person. Fit. Doesn't do drugs no more. All kinds of stuff. Just yeah, that guy did a whole three sixty. Kevin Gates as well. Yeah. Kevin Gates gets locked up again. Comes yeah. back out. Big. Loses Big. weight. Changed completely. Like it, it. You should take it as a blessing, honestly. Yeah. And I know it's bad to see because you're like, okay, it's not a blessing to get locked up. That's not what I'm saying. If you do something bad, use that time. You got six months to just chill. Let the world stop. Focus on yourself for those six months and hopefully come out as a better person. Yeah, but I don't think they've realized that at that moment until they get to jail and they'll be like, man, this actually was a good thing to happen. Yeah. You know, because it's hard to think about that. Like, oh man, should I just take a break? Maybe prison. It is, yeah. You know, no, <laughs> nobody I, thought that until they get in there and then they're like, damn. Yeah. Like, prison saved me. You yeah. Know? No, some, some yeah, people are. Yeah, it's crazy. There's actually a statistic out there that especially in like uh, poverty communities that they have a higher chance of dying being free like in the streets yeah. versus being locked up. It's crazy. Because in prison, you have to follow prison rules. It's unfortunate. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Like that, that there's a lot of probably incidents that probably would have... Here's, here's a good example. If Pop Smoke actually got locked up for that Rolls Royce incident, you remember when you rented this Rolls Royce and they said he stole it, he said I didn't, they didn't give him no jail time, nothing. If you would have got locked up for 30 days, probably would have still been alive. You know, that's what I mean. It's like these, like, yeah. you know, remember that, the, well, here's, here's another incident. This is long. The DOC, the guy who lost his voice, worked with Dr. Drake. Police officer stopped him that night. Because he's the DOC, he was famous at the time. Police officer let him go. He was intoxicated, drunk. He should have been locked up that night. Instead, let him go, drives, gets in a car accident, forever loses his voice, can never make music again. But he can't help yeah. produce with Dr. Dre. But that changed his life forever. He's not, never, it could have been, he could have been one of the biggest, best rappers ever. But that just, that moment, that cop let him go. That cop would have just pulled him over and locked him up like a regular yeah, person. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, certain things, even though they're bad, they're probably good, meant to, a good reason to have him there, you know. And not to, to say that the cop, you know, made a bad decision on that, too. Cause it's just, you just got you know, starstruck. Is yeah, what it is. it's like sometimes that happens. No, I'm not blaming. I'm yeah. not blaming anything or anybody. Because time yeah. events, you can't change time yeah, events. This is what just, it is. You might think it's good, but it ends up being bad. Sometimes. But just, I, I just these guys just keep making mistakes over and over again, man. Right. Learn, learn. 
You know, Learn from people, why are you man. evading police? Learn from other artists, shit. Yeah, stop evading police. I know, I get it. It sucks to be in a situation. Learn from it, move on. So, yeah, hopefully 42 Doug figures this out, goes in there, comes back a better changed person. Um, and, yeah. I went to just check his age. He's 26. Damn. Yeah, yeah he, he's, he's got a pair. He's going he's gonna to look young for at least, at least 60. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to look like 35 to 60. Yeah, so... Uh, Dr. Dre, this this news was kind of already reported when it happened, but uh, it's been kind of confirmed through this new book that came out. But if you guys remember when Dr. Dre, uh, yeah, I think he was on Instagram, and Tyrese, Tyrese uh, Gibson, who if you don't know who that is, Fast and Furious mm-hmm. actor, he goes and he says, first hip-hop billionaire, Dr. Dre, yeah, first hip-hop billionaire. This is before the news of Apple buying Beats by Dre came out. Okay. And because they leaked that news early, this article says it cost them two hundred million dollars. Yeah, that's a lot of money. Yeah, when I saw two hundred million, I was like, "Holy, Holy shit!" Holy shit! So let's go over the article. Uh, Dr. Dre and Jimmy Iovine's Beats Electronics was purchased by Apple in 2014, but the deal was reportedly almost thrown into jeopardy after Dre leaked the news early, according to the New York Times reporter Trip McKell's new book, "After Steve: How Apple Became a Trillion Dollar Company and Lost Its Soul." Dre's famous video proclaiming he's the first hip-hop billionaire uh, caused Apple to cut $200 million off the price. The initial agreement in place was reported to be $3.2 billion, just as long as things were kept strictly confidential. It was a sum, it was a sum that Iveen and Dre could barely fathom, reads an excerpt obtained by iMore. As the lawyers worked through final details, Iveen summoned the leadership team of Beats to his home near Beverly Hills. He told everyone that they were on the cusp of finalizing a massive deal. The only thing that could spoil it would be it would be for word of the deal to leak. Mikel claims Iveen warned his team, whatever you do, don't talk about this, and even told Dre, remember that scene in Goodfellas where Jimmy tells the guys, don't buy any furs, don't buy any cars, don't get showy, don't move. But in the early hours the next morning, Diddy apparently called Jimmy Iveen informing him that Tyrese had posted a video of Dr. Dre celebrating the deal uh, by telling the world about his billionaire status. I bet they got mad at Tyrese for that shit. Yeah, Tyrese cost him 200 million, but the Dr. Dre should have never let that shit slide, too. You should have stopped confirming. You should have just ignored the video. Like, he was going to the back, like, yeah, like, man, Dr. Dre's fault, oh, too. Oh, shit. Yeah, he would. Yeah, yeah, nah. It's, I remember the video. So the article says, at 2 a.m. in the morning, Iveen got a call from Puff Daddy. Who was screaming that Dre and and Tyrese, a rapper, were talking about the deal in the Facebook video? The book reads: Iveen pulled up the video and cringed as he saw Tyrese bragging about being drunk on Heineken in a recording studio. After seeing that clip, Mikkel says Iveen panicked about what might happen to the deal, but Tim Cook remained calm about the situation after bringing them to Apple's headquarters in California. When word of the video reached Cook, he summoned Iveen and Dre to. Corporatier, oh, that's scary. <laughs> that is scary. Imagine Tim Cook calls you and is like, after this video comes out, he's like, come here. Uh, he invited them into the conference room for a private conversation. Iveen was anxious and afraid that Cook was going to kill the deal. Instead of the anger and cursing that would have poured out of Jobs in a moment like that, yeah, Steve Jobs would have handled that completely different. He's been like, fuck this deal. Uh, Cook ex- ex- exuded calmness. Uh, he told the music executives that he was disappointed and wished that Dre's social media outbursts hadn't happened, but said that the video hadn't shaken his conviction that buying Beats was right for Apple. Mikhail sells Cook used the social media fiasco, fiasco to demand an adjustment to the terms of the deal, shaving $200 million from the offer days after, enough to make sure Dr. Dre didn't become a billionaire. <laughs> so, Shame it. Yeah, damn. So he made sure. Page, huh? I mean, don't report your billionaire before you officially become a billionaire. So yeah. that's a hard lesson for Dr. Dre. This is why I hate drinking alcohol. Oh. Yeah, uh, that's probably what it got. They are also Tyrese cost them two hundred million dollars. At the end of the day, though, you know, is it really a huge difference between eight hundred million to a billion? It's two hundred million dollar difference. It's a lot, but lot. lifestyle wise, not really. Yeah, it ain't much of a change. I, yeah, I, at least I wouldn't think. So yeah, the reports time revealed the price went from three point two billion to three billion. So. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good way for Tim Cook to save money. He's probably. Oh, IV was good. I could see him. Yeah. Man, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, losing 200 million just because your drunk friend revealed something early, that would suck. That would piss me off. But whatever. The deal still happened. Three billion. Dr. A walked away with 800 million. So. Oh, yeah. Good money still. Yeah. I'll take 800 million over, you know, anything. So. ASAP Rocky dropped a new track. And I just want to talk about it quick because in the video, he's proposing to Rihanna. Uh, and his grills it says, will you marry me? And then Rihanna has it in her uh, grills. Yes. And the video, the visuals are pretty good. I don't like the song. I'm not really a fan of the song. I definitely will not be bumping it ever again. But the visuals are good. In the bars, he said, and this is clear shots of Chris Brown. He said, I don't beat my bitch. I need my bitch. As you guys know, Rihanna and Chris Brown, fighting incident that happened. Rihanna's moved on for, for gay Chris Brown. Chris Brown's moved on from it. Most of the world has moved on from it, really. Um, besides a few people online, if you mention it. Oh, my God, Chris Brown. This so, you know, he sent some little shots. I'm sure Chris Brown caught wind of this. Chris Brown's going to send some little shots back. Might start a beef between ASAP Rocky and Chris Brown. Will I be interested in that? No, I think Chris Chris Brown's a way better artist than ASAP Rocky will ever dream oh, to be God. of. Yes. Um, so, yeah, it's a, that was a slick, slick shot. That was really stupid. But, yeah, I just wanted to talk about it quick. and uh, Let's move on from that situation. I think mm -hmm. even the Will Smith slap, people are still talking about it. Let's try to move on from these situations. Uh, right. Things happen, move on, shit happens. Lil Durk is killing it once again. What? We're not recording. Oh my god, we're sure this is not recording. Yeah. Click record? I did not click record. Nope. Are you sure? I uh, nope. There's no timer. <laughs> Just click record. Whatever. We'll, 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 I'll take the audio from the camera. Okay. Yeah. So whatever. Oh, it's going to sound so bad on the. Yeah, the just be like, my. Yeah, I just apologize. Yeah, we apologize. If the audio got better, the thing wasn't recording at all the whole time. Yeah, I just kind of realized that. I'm I saw it green, but I was like, isn't it supposed to be green? No, it's supposed to be red. That's why I uh, looked at it earlier. I'm like, uh, I was like, eh. Okay, and, so if you guys. I was like, it popped in my head again. I'm like, wait a minute. Oh, we take the time, too. I don't see no time, and it says it shows green. I'm like, fuck. Recorded all that just to, oh, my God. Uh, Whatever. Yeah, sorry, uh, guys. If you guys hear a switch in the audio, it's because the original audio wasn't recorded, but the camera audio picked it up, so I guess I'll just have to adjust the camera audio and fix it to whatever sounds the yeah. best, which I don't know how good it's going to sound. I for, Please forgive us for that. Yes. Um, Shit happens sometimes. Yeah. I don't know. I thought I clicked it when, you, when, when we started. I was like, I swear. Yeah. I, I think we forgot, yeah. But it, anyways, it is what it is. Man, all right. Fuck! No, I, I, Kendrick reaction was... Uh, yeah, just, that distracted us. No, I'm just saying. It's not that. It's just I, I like the reaction we had. In the, always when you get something yeah, good, it's like something oh, happened. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> ah, all right. Uh, Lil Durk is dominating the Billboard Hot 100 for the second year running. Uh, this is crazy. So chart Billboard charts revealed this. Every year who's running you know, the most entries on the Hot 100 every year past 10 years basically 2012 it was the glee tv cast with 27 then the next like fucking three four five six years is drake the 2013 he had 19 2014 he had 12 2015 he had 31 2016 he had 35 2017 he had 29 2018 he had 35 this is how many entries you've had on billboard hot 100 so drake ran that for the next like what 2013 14, six years six years then the baby had the most entries in 2019, which is surprising, at 22. Then Lil Uzivert in 2020, 46. That's which, a lot. Yeah, because his album, his album actually, all the tracks pretty much I think went on there. Right. Mind you, this is not number one. This is just how many times you've entered the Hot 100 with a new song. Lil Durk and Taylor Swift tied each other in 2021 with 41. And right now, Lil Durk leads all artists in 2022 so far with 20 entries on the Hot 100. I think Dirk is trying to go for the number one again because yeah. he's dropping the deluxe version of the album. So I'm sure those tracks sure. are going to start leaking on there. And then I'm sure Dirk's going to release another project before the year is over. I can see that happening. A collab project or something. He's going to drop something again. Yeah, he's working. Yeah. It looks like. So he is leading it right now in 2022. So shout out to Lil Dirk. Congratulations. Uh, Big L. As you guys know, Big L was killed back in 1999. Uh, he's got posthumous albums. He was slated to be one of the best rappers. Uh, this guy's, you know, lyrical ability. People want me to do a documentary on him. I will down the line. 
Uh, but it became official that a street is being named after him in Harlem. On Friday, May 6th, the official Instagram page for Big L documentary, Street Struck, shared a post announcing the late rapper would be getting a street renamed in his honor. Big L's old stamp grounds, uh, 140th and Lenox Avenue, will be renamed Lamont Big L Coleman Way. So they posted, uh, it took a whole lot of effort and support to get this great point, to get to this great point. But as a collective, we made it happen. The biggest thank yous go out to Dope 500 plus people who signed and passed the petition around so we can get this street renamed. Uh, there are entirely too many pe good people that gave this their support. So with all my heart, I personally want to say thank you. Big L, rest in peace. Lamont, Big L, Coleman, Way. So shout out to them for getting the street renamed. Congrats. Legendary Big L. And now Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg's always doing investments. So D -O -W -G. And he's actually teaming up with Ice Cube, which is cool. Uh, Snoop Dogg has been arguably America's most beloved pitchman and spokesperson. Much to the curiosity of some of his peers, the death row owner, longtime Lakers superfan, is taking his love of hoops to another level thanks to his relationship with his, with the Mount Westmore group mate Ice Cube. According to TMZ Hip Hop, Snoop, along with PayPal co-founder Ken Howery, spent 625000 to purchase an ownership stake in Bovac, a big three team, which which went winless during its 2021 campaign due to injuries. Cube took to Twitter on April 23rd to tease the announcement of Snoop's desire to become an owner of more than one team and urged others to join in on the expansion of his basketball league, and Snoop followed through his desire. So, you guys don't know what Big League is. Big League is very fire. It's like, it's, it's very fire. It's like these basketball players that didn't make the NBA or the ones that retired from the real NBA and want to keep playing. Right. So it's less schedule, less tough. You know, it's like something that's lighter and it's still entertaining because these are NBA, former NBA players. They're still good. They're just a lot slower, a little bit older, but it's still entertaining. Wasn't that Cavaliers player that was on drugs? Yeah. He got, yeah. yeah. I forgot his name. Uh, Yeah. I forget his name yeah. too. Delonte West, I think. Was it? Delonte West. That's a good... Let me see, Delonte. Yeah, Delonte West. Delonte West. Yeah, Delonte West. I knew I, I thought it was his name. So, yeah. So shout out to Snoop Dogg investing in it, Ice Cube doing big things, and we'll keep our eye on that. Dope. Man. New music. Uh, we haven't. We we're actually on like a mini kind of trip, mm -hmm. celebrating our brother in law's birthday. So shout out to him. Yeah. So we didn't get a chance to really listen to a lot of, a lot of new music, but we did hear the ASAP Rocky DMP. I didn't like the record personally, but that's yeah. out. Uh, Doja Cat Vegas is out. Sir Satisfaction is out. Logic featuring Rust Therapy Music. Uh, Two Seat Keeper, Roy Woods, Insecure. Mozzie with Shorty Shorty, Tell the Truth. Murray, Mama's Love, Stunner for Vegas, and I Swear, Vezo, BMF. Uh, Lil Gunner and Young Bands, My Brothers. And The Boy featuring Draco, The Ruler, The Deal. The Deal. Now going to albums. Jack Harlow. Has dropped his sophomore album. He's getting so much. It's mixed reviews. I haven't listened to the album. I'm not really a fan of Jack Harlow. I've said that thousands of times. The album's called Come Home. The Kids Miss You. He's projected to sell anywhere from like 100 to 130,000 copies the first week. Okay. Uh, IDK and Kane Tronda released a simple project. I need to check out because IDK is always killing it. I have to check that out. Lil Got It, The Cheater, dropped his project. 19 tracks on that one. Uh, Ella, my heart on my sleeve dropped her project, and that's it. Album sales number one, Future Toxic King. That's what they call him on the new Drake video with him. Uh, I never liked you. Debuted at number one with two hundred and twenty-seven thousand copies, which is the highest first week sales for Future's career ever. So wow, yeah. So clearly, that's a step yeah. in the right direction. So shout out to Future. Congratulations. Number one. Congratulations. Uh, the best rapper alive. I don't know about that. But that's yeah, what they that said. Was, yeah. <laughs> the Weeknd is at number two with Dawn FM. I don't know why this came back up on the charts. If anybody knows, let us know. But that slid up all the way to number two with 56,000 copies sold. Morgan Wallen's at number three with Dangerous, the double album. 49,000 copies sold. Miranda Lambert, Paulo Mino, debuted at number four with 34,000 copies sold. Olivia Rodrigo Sour at number five. With 34,000 copies sold. Lil Dirk at number six with 77220 with six, I mean, 33,000 copies sold. 
uh, and Canton Soundtracks at number seven with 32,000 copies sold. The Weekend the Highlights is at number eight with 32,000 copies sold. No Cap, Mr. Crawford is debuted at number nine with 29,000 copies sold. Drake, Certified Lover Boy is at number 10 with 29,000 copies sold. Pooh the Shiesty Season Project, they dropped a deluxe version of that, went back up on the charts. It is at number, I like, technically debuted there, but because it's a second type of album, 27,000 copies sold. Um, you got Little Baby My Turn still charting number 15 with 20,000 copies sold. Gonna DS Forever at number 16 with 20,000 copies sold. Pusha T, it's almost dry. So it went from number one down to number 20 with 19,000 copies sold the second week. Uh, the Kid LeRae, Fuck Love, number 22 with 18,000 copies sold. Let's see. Pop Smoke, Shoot for the Stars, Aim for the Moon at number 27 with 17,000 copies sold. Eminem, Curtain Call at number 28 with 16,000 copies sold. Kendrick Lamar, Good Kid, Mad City at number 34 with 16,000 copies sold. Kodak Black, Back for Everything at number 39 with 16,000 copies sold. Polo G Hall of Fame at number 41 with 14,000 copies sold. Kendrick Lamar, Damn. Number 45 with 14,000 copies sold. Drake, Take Care, number 46 with 14,000 copies sold. Tupac's Greatest Hits, <laughs> number 47 with 13,000 copies sold. That's crazy. It's weird some albums are coming back. Yeah, That's streaming. Crazy. Streaming's crazy. I don't know why Tupac's, maybe because Dear Mama, I don't know, probably Mother's Day. Mother's Day, so. yeah. Well, yeah. That's a good idea. But that was like a week before, so it makes, I don't know. Anyways, yeah. Um, once again, we apologize for the audio. Yes. Man. Um, It's going to start out. The audio is going to be not as quality as this, but it happens. We made a mistake. Uh, Sorry, guys. If it doesn't sound good, I'm actually going to scrap it. Right. So, yeah, I'm going to scrap it completely. I got to listen to it. So, uh, it's just, <laughs> yeah, it is what it is. Fuck. Shit, man. Fuck. Nah, it, it should it's been be a fine. long day for us, guys. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Fucking A. <laughs> Fucking A. Uh, yeah, Places 5 giveaway. DeversMentality.com forward slash giveaway ends <laughs> in about a week. So go ahead and enter before it ends because after that, once it's closed, it's closed. Yeah. Um, Patreon.com forward slash the mentality. Support us on there. Spotify, Deezer, Pocket Cast, Apple Music, all that, YouTube. Everywhere. Check us out. Whenever you listen to this, day, night, have an amazing day and night, whatever. Yeah. And I forget how I used to say these things because it's just a long day. Yeah. And um, Shout out to all the supporters, man. For real. And 100%. Thank you guys so much. And we'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace. Have a great night. Day. Peace. You. Yeah.